a lot of people celebrated you on being the podfather. And oh, I was yeah. thinking about it, and I'm like, you know, I still remember busting your balls when you and Joe would go up to the room and bust my balls. Like, come on, come up to the room and do a podcast. I'm like, oh, yeah, a cops. Who's, who's up at 14 years old? Who's up at midnight? A bunch of 14-year-olds. And you guys would smoke, and I'd lose my mind. Yeah, you did. not You hated it. I remember I you were like, "Close that! Close! Turn that, that camera off!" Oh my god! <laughs> the FBI's watching us. You want to? You want to give them the evidence to come here and hang us? Yeah. We ain't legal in DC, <laughs> and here we are smoking like we're chimneys. Mm -hmm. They're gonna see us. And then somebody called Joe's management and said that their kid did DMT because he watched one of the podcasts. Oh shit! No way. Do you remember that? You don't. Remember no, that? I don't remember that. So all that talk had to go away. Like, all this was fucking, like, I still remember it going down. Then you guys started doing it on a couch. Those pop up from time to time. Of us sitting yeah. together on a couch. Isn't that weird? Me next to Ari with hair, with a T-shirt. I think eventually there's going to be, like, a history book written about it. Because oh. those early podcasts, like the Fleshlight Days of the Joe Rogan podcast, are why I'm here. That's how I found all you guys. Those pod those podcasts are legendary. Some of them don't hold up well though. They're, they're like an old movie where you sit back and watch, and we're bitching at about something like you know some crazy conspiracy <laughs> or something <laughs> like like AIDS isn't real, and you're like, what the fuck are we talking about? <laughs> Who cares though? You're a comedian. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't look at it like that. I just I, I miss those days. It's funny what my pops up on my screen once a month. Every time I open up YouTube, and let's say I'm scrolling for a certain, like the first homepage, one thing always pops up that I go, wow. And it's like uh, an ice hot box crown, the Chronicle. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. One popped up about 10 days ago. <laughs> I am fucking high as a kite. <laughs> and it was right around the time my wife was pregnant. Mm. I said I had to go home. Because I got a pregnant wife. I watched it what, for a Isn't that minutes. weird? It's like a time capsule. There yeah. had to be seven of us in that room barking into a microphone. Rogan, me, you. I watched the one when Doug Stanhope called me Joey Jingle. That's right. <laughs> and I was dying. And, <laughs> and, and then I did one with me. Stan Hope. Yeah, and you got mad about it. I remember. Did they, you, I'm not Joey. I didn't take your money. No, I, I sure I got mad. I, well, don't accuse me of something I didn't do. If I did it, I did it. And But the, the reason I adore Stan Hope on Rogan is because I egg him on to light cigarettes. Oh, yeah. Like, I'll pull him in the side and go, listen, Rogan loves when you smoke. He loves the smell of cigarette smoke. <laughs> and Doug Stan Hope will look at me going, like, you're fucking crazy. He doesn't like cigarettes. Yes, he does. He just don't like telling people. Because every time <laughs> Doug Stano it's takes torture. a cigarette out, and he tuck it apart, he'll talk to Joe like this for a minute. Then he goes, every time he does that noise, Joe's spine would jump a little bit. <laughs> and I would fucking die. Because uh, I know it's eating away at Joe every time you hear and isn't that crazy? The early episodes were in Joe's house and we're lighting up cigarettes inside of his house. You know how insane that sounds nowadays? <laughs> Wait, you were smoking cigarettes in Rogan's house? In his office? Oh, my God. <laughs> Look at what this has fucking become. It's insane. It, when you sit back and look at the years and the, the big podcast that was supposed to be big and disappeared and the concept podcast, but still, this is what America still wants to hear, is the basic what's happening into your conversation podcast. You know, just three people, two guys talking shit. You know, I love when people contact you and say, hey, this guy would be perfect on your podcast. You know why Gabriel got a million fucking downloads? Because I've known him for 20 years, and that comes through over the microphone. People feel the love. You know, when I go on Rogan, I'm like this dumbest guest. <laughs> I'm like this dumbest guest. I don't know. I've been on there a lot. And I get fucking more hits than those geniuses. <laughs> I laugh my ass off. They're like geniuses with glasses talking about biochemics. Yeah. And you got to read the post to those. I love when Joe has scientific ideology just on. You're a fucking dummy. You know that? You try, you're probably sitting there with your glasses on. You got 20-20 vision. You just want people to think you're smart. It, 
it's so weird that I go on there because we're not saying nothing that they haven't heard already. They feel the love going through the microphone. They feel this guy really cares for this guy. When Ralphie would come on here, you know, when you come on here, when Eddie comes on here, they feel that. Those podcasts, we get great numbers because we, we, we can sit here and hum. <laughs> I, was, I was going to eat two garlic pills for in the daytime. Oh, thank God you did. I ate them last night, so... Those things are, you got to watch out for those things. Oh, I, they make me burp and like nonstop. No, they don't make, they're they clean. Don't. They're clean. I, that's what do you mean they're clean? You fart out of me for eight hours. I'd rather fart than burp. <laughs> I'd rather it to go out than to me to go in and smell burp all fucking day. <laughs> you know what? That was like the hot restaurant when I came Oh, that's here. the worst restaurant? The garlic one. The garlic one. And it's, it's just, stinking rose. What's yeah. it? Just, yeah, just, uh, it's got to be an outside patio. That's the only way I'll go there next time. I don't, because I don't want to. Last time I left there, on paper, it's a great restaurant. It really is. From the minute you get there, they give you a, a huge piece of bread with a roasted garlic, and you squeeze the garlic cloves out. It's so better than fucking butter. Yeah. It's better than butter. You sit there going, how could this be? And then you get everything fucking. Yeah, that place is great. But no, watching those early, that's 10 years ago. More so. It's even longer now. Some of those are like when me, me, you, and that one dude used to do it, like, uh, like we'd just be like in a van, I'd, like somewhere here in North Hollywood, we would go get some food and just put a MP3 recorder down in between of us all. You know, remember when we used to do it? You probably don't even remember this, like where we used to re- just record at a restaurant. Uh, and uh, like there's a picture of us like outside in the parking lot doing a podcast with a little MP3 recorder. Remember I still that? remember me, you, and Ari on yeah. my steps talking about yep. cats, cats. That's right, cats, cats. podcasts, podcasts. <laughs> me, you know, you think about all this shit, and you go, "Wow!" It's like we were doing comedy. We were open micers of yeah, of podcasting. Podcast we were open micers. That was our first five years. We did craziness. We did live podcasts. I mean, you guys have turned Kill Tony into a fucking machine. Yeah, that's a, yeah huge it's, monster now. I watch Kill Tony sometimes, and I die a laughter. But I'm also watching what you guys are doing international. And I'll tell you what pisses me off. That not even True TV has reached out. Oh, yeah. it's it's it, this, this is a show that is could be fucking enormous. I think they're kind of scared of it because... One, it's one of the few, uh, last shows that I think is still raw, and like there's like there's nothing PC about it. Like it, we actually lean against it, you know. It, it's and I think you know they look at it and they're like, well, there's a reason for the internet because of this show, you know. We can't. I mean, no, then let's get let's uh, get an internet company involved. And Monday nights, you pay per view it, and you really have real people. Yeah, that are gonna I say agree. Real opinions, and say, you know what, go shoot yourself. I mean, you know. People want to see that guy that's got the balls to tell a young comic to shoot down his dreams. I don't have the balls to tell a comic to shoot down his dreams. I'd say something, whatever, but I'd end it on a positive note. Mm -hmm. I'd always end it on a positive note. I don't have the balls to tell somebody. Hey. Especially nowadays, you don't know who you're talking to. We got that purse house murder on I know. <laughs> last <crazy>. month. <laughs> so you don't know, like half these people, you know. I'm not, but I'll tell you. Do or die. <laughs> <laughs> I think of, when I think about Kill Tony sometimes, I think about the people who used to say shit to me when I first started saying comedy. And I got to tell you something. 70% of the feedback, they would say something to me, but it would always be probably, they go lose that joke. That hurts. <laughs> that hurts when you fucking stay up one night and you think a joke is good. And it is a good joke. You just said it in the wrong place. And it ate such a bag of dicks that the guy you're working with is like, just get rid of that joke. And that that hurts, you know, like that hurts. Nobody wants to hear that. But there's certain people that I've known for 20 years that we should just put on Kill Tony just to tell them why they've been here for 20 years and nothing has happened. Yeah, and like, we get that too. Some of these guys, we've been doing comedy for twenty years, and you're like, "What the hell? How?" Because this is <laughs> this is what happened. Yeah, you know that joke you do, you never got rid of it. Yep, you never got rid of it. You know when you're doing comedy, I told him yesterday. You've been friends for four years. What, what do you think you're writing for a special? 
just write and get on stage every night. Mm -hmm. That's it. This is how, just get over those three year hump where finally people start emceeing in clubs in LA. You know, we're in the heart of comedy here. Then it's not like there's a shortage of comics here. <laughs> right. You know, everybody's chasing the same fucking nickel when you're in LA. So the only way to go on nickel is to be creative. You gotta be creative and hustle and find that fucking way. But it's three or four fucking years. You know, I, I, I don't know. I just always felt Kill Tony should be on TV, HBO. I agree.